Hello friends, welcome into NBA Now. I'm Tom, that's Jimmy, and we are back with some NBA rumors here as free agency really kind to start to get going. Not officially, but there's no tampering allowed, so you know. <laughs> right. All of that. Never tamper. So with no tampering allowed, let's take a look here at Kevin Durant and the Brooklyn Nets. And what's going on there, Jimmy, is again, no tampering, but teams are, you know, making moves behind the scenes. Uh, the latest rumor is that now all of a sudden the Brooklyn Nets have become the front runner to land the superstar forward despite that torn Achilles. He's still going to get a max contract wherever, but Kendrick Perkins, ex-teammate, still a good buddy of Kevin Durant, says the Nets are the team to watch out for. Now, he also said the Knicks are still in the running for KD. Don't count them out. But everybody's kind of overlooking the Nets in a potential pairing with Kyrie Irving there in Brooklyn. Well, way back when, the rumor was that Irving and Durant were going to team up together, and everyone thought it was going to be the Knicks. And then at some point along the line, they didn't want to join with the Knicks anymore. Now they want to go to the Nets there. I find this one interesting. I think it makes sense, though, because if you're Brooklyn, you can add Durant, and you're not going to have him for a year. But you're still going to be a playoff team, probably a top four seed. Yeah, I mean, they're already a playoff team with D'Angelo Russell in there instead of Kyrie Irving. And as great as D'Angelo Russell was, he's still not Kyrie. I mean, D'Angelo was a replacement all-star. Kyrie was an automatic all-star in the Eastern Conference. All right, so if it's not the Nets then, Jimmy, here are some of your other teams to watch out for. Anyone really jump out to you as you get closer and closer to NBA free agency? I just don't think you can count out the Warriors. Uh, a return to the Warriors still makes sense in my opinion, but also the Knicks. I, I think it's a three-team race. The two Los Angeles teams are becoming further and further away from actually being in contention for Kevin Durant at this point, but we'll see. So I'm going to say in no or in my particular order, the Nets, Knicks, and Warriors right there. Again, those are some potential suitors there. Let's take a look now at DeAndre Jordan, who the Nets reportedly, according to Mark Stein of, of the New York Times, the Nets are looking into signing DeAndre to help lure KD to Brooklyn, a.k.a. what the New York Knicks literally did this offseason. Or I guess midseason. Exactly, and, and I think that's one of the major reasons the Knicks were like, hey, Mavs, give us DeAndre Jordan in return for Porzingis because he's going to help us recruit some guys. Now, this past season, he, he wasn't his same defensive self. Still pulled down rebounds, 11 points per game, 13.1 rebounds, and then the 1.1 blocks per game. He's still a force somewhat down low, but in all reality, this signing would be more to recruit Kevin Durant because DeAndre Jordan is pretty buddy-buddy with a lot of people in the league. And frankly, Jordan, if this is how the, how, if they did land him and Kyrie and KD, he wouldn't start for them. Mm -hmm. That'd be Jared Allen, but I will make note, this squad is good. Real good. Really, really good. I, I love the, the two of KD and Kyrie. Obviously not right away. Kevin Durant will have to take a year to get back into playing shape. Jared Allen is a feared rim protector, but he's not a good banger down low. So that's why you bring in DeAndre Jordan. He, he goes up against the guys like Joel Embiid or Al Horford if he stays in the Eastern Conference. And then Kuroks, Levert, you can kind of swap them in and out for guys like Joe Harris, Torian Prince now. And then Dinwiddie's still a good backup point guard in Brooklyn as well. What seed does that team take in the Eastern Conference once KD is fully healthy? That's top four easily, potentially top two, seeing how, how the rest of the free agency shakes out because so much is up in the air right now. Well, plan A for Brooklyn, very clearly Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, but what is plan B if, let's say, Durant goes to New York or resigns with the Warriors or something like that? I think it has to be bring back D'Angelo Russell if that bridge isn't burnt yet, which I don't think it is. Bring back D'Angelo Russell and go get Jimmy Butler, and you put them in the same backcourt and then run with the squad you had last year at a healthy Jimmy Butler, that's much better than what you had as a, a six seed going into the Eastern Conference you last year. You could season. also do a Kyrie Irving and Jimmy Butler pairing too, right? Oh, absolutely, 100%. And then also one guy we're overlooking here is Al Horford. Potentially bring him in to start alongside Jared Allen in the front court. All right, folks, let us know in the comments section where do you think Kevin Durant will sign in NBA free agency? Jimmy, are you going with Brooklyn or... I'm 50-50 on Brooklyn and New York. Uh -huh. I know I think I said Brooklyn earlier in first place, but I'm going to give the edge to the Knicks. I okay, think no Jimmy matter flip what. Flopper here. Yeah, I'm flip-flopping within is summer. two minutes. Yeah, everybody's going everywhere. Oh, I see what you did. Nice. Yeah, see, that was funny there. All right, folks, let us know what you guys think there in the comment section. Uh, Jimmy did not handle that joke very well. Let's move then to Kawhi Leonard. If he, With Durant's injury, Kawhi is the top free agent out there. What's the latest on this front? Well, obviously, Kawhi Leonard just opted out of his $21.3 million player option with the Toronto Raptors. The which is a no-brainer, by the way. Of course. I mean, you knew he was going to do that. So that's not the report here. The report here is that he is seriously considering re-signing with Toronto. Okay. And, and something we kind of assumed after they won the NBA Finals is that he would at least look a little closer at staying in Toronto. But 
Now it's a serious consideration. And then on the other hand, you got the Los Angeles Clippers putting up billboards around LA. They're already beginning to recruit in the no tampering NBA league that we have right now. My favorite part of the billboards is like, has at any point an NBA player went, you know what? I'm going to sign with this team because they put up a billboard Dude. on me. Nice billboard. I can see myself <laughs> like here for the long more, term more, now. That's kind of more of a fan thing in the end. Yeah, I think so. Too. All right, so potential suitors here, the Raptors, the Clippers, Lakers, and Knicks. The Clippers, meanwhile, if it's not Toronto, they kind of strike me as the top threat. I think it's absolutely a two-team race at this point. It's between going back to Toronto or going to L.A., playing close to home, playing on the West Coast. That's what he wants to do. But you look at the top five guys that the Clippers would have next season, Lou Williams, Shea Gilgis, Montrezl Harrell, six-man squad. Yeah, and then Gallinari, if they don't move his contract and sham it, it's like a fun team, but is that a title contender? Even if you add Kawhi, is it a title contender? I, I don't know. That's I, I, I'm going to go with yes because it's Kawhi. Right. But at the same time, you're leaving a title winner for right. a possible title contender. And Toronto, they should be good again next year. I mean, their returning role players are ridiculous. Pascal Siakam in the running for most improved player. Showed, at, showed out in the playoffs at a coming out party. Kyle Lowry is still a good point guard, no matter what jokes you want to make about him. And Gasol, of course, has that player option. I expect him to be back in, back in Toronto. And guys like Van Fleet and Ibaka are... You can't sleep on them either. If they you made... can re-sign a Danny Green, too. It's Exactly. It's such a fantastic spot. The role players in Toronto are so much stronger than they are in L.A. And if what you care about is winning, I think Kawhi stays in Toronto. Could we see a scenario where Kawhi does the old 1-1 one and one or even a 2-1 and one to help maximize his earnings long term and then do the whole free agency dance again in a year or two? I think that's the most likely scenario at this point. I, I don't think he really cares about long-term money because he's going to get long-term money plenty. whenever he <laughs> wants. <laughs> All right, folks, let us know in the comments section where you think Kawhi will sign. I'm typing in TRO for the Raptors. Are you doing the same, Jimmy? Uh, I'm typing in TOR, not TRO. There, yeah, but, that one. But yeah, that one. But yeah, I, I'm agreeing. I, I'm thinking he stays with the Raptors. Call me Mitchell Renz with that read right there. <laughs> Let's move over to the Philadelphia 76ers now. Jimmy Butler and Tobias Harris. There is some uncertainty here. What's going on with Jimmy Butler, though? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously he is a free agent, and I do believe he is Philadelphia's top priority this summer. Me. You know, that you can say it's Tobias Harris and Jimmy Butler, but in all reality, it's probably Jimmy Butler. But rumblings, quote-unquote, around the league are that they could miss out on both of these guys, and that disrupts That'd nearly be a disaster. their entire, I mean, their whole that's core not, that, blows stop. up. That's not going to happen because that's not trusting the process. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, whatever you say. The but, process is to re-sign Tobias Harris and Butler now. Yeah, and I mean, even Tobias Harris, as, as good as Jimmy Butler is, obviously Tobias Harris is really good too. Career highs last year. You can see their points per game if you match them up. If you have to choose one or the other, this is kind of what you're going up against. You got Tobias Harris who brings you just a little bit more offensive game, but not that much more. But then you got Jimmy Butler who brings you nearly as much offense along with the defensive He's side. He's such a good defensive player. Incredible two-way player in the NBA right now. All right, so for Jimmy Butler, let's say he wants to leave Philadelphia. Where could he end up? The Lakers, yeah, you can't count him out in any scenario, and especially with Jimmy Butler. He's kind of always been tied there, but now it might become a little bit more of a reality. The Knicks are another team that if they whiff on their top guys, he could be a, a potential destination for him. And then we mentioned Brooklyn earlier teaming up with Kyrie Irving would not shock me in the least. The the Houston Rockets could also make some sense, but the money's very difficult to even come close to making that work. A there. lot of moving parts if he wants to end up in Houston. How about Tobias Harris then? I think he's a bit of a going to a smaller market team okay. than Jimmy Butler is. A, a team like the Mavs, Kings, they both have money that they'd be willing to throw at him. The Pacers are a team I could definitely see him ending up on. The Utah Jazz are very interested, even though they just traded for Mike Conley, so the money there could be interesting. But Philadelphia, a return there would not shock me at I think all either. Philadelphia needs those two back because yep. otherwise this unit is not great. It, um, something out of an NBA that's nightmare. Bad. That's like NBA 2K, uh, you know, someone else is going to the Sixers and like they forget to add shooting. Yeah. Because there's no shooting on that court right there. Yeah. Uh, I love Matisse Thibel, don't get I, me wrong. I, I, I know you do. I love that draft pickup, yeah. but he's not Jimmy Butler or Tobias Harris in any sense. And your, your shooting guard, J.J. Redick, is also a free agent right. there, so that's better keep both and, of them. And now players. this isn't this is not what they would put out on the court. They would add other there pieces. There would be pieces, don't get us wrong, but this is what they have right now. Mm. And it's not pretty in Philadelphia. Not pretty at all. Alright guys, who would you rather have? Type J B for Butler, T H for Tobias. Who you picking? Even though he might be an issue off the court at times and, and some chemistry problems with Jimmy Butler, you still got to pick him. The two-way the two way ability is ridiculous. If I'm starting my squad, give me Jimmy Butler. But if I'm looking for like a third piece, 
I might actually go Tobias Harris because he's a little bit better at just like a spot up shooter. It definitely depends on the team. The right yeah. team could end up could choose Tobias over Jimmy Butler, but if you're Philadelphia, give me Jimmy Buckets. All right, one last rumor here. This one on the trade front. This is Steven Adams. Remember, the Thunder are still trying to shed salary to get below that luxury, or at least reduce their luxury tax because they don't like to pay it. And that's costing them a lot of money right now. What about the Boston Celtics as a fit here? Yeah, apparently he they are he is on their radar. I think it really hurts OKC that this trade could potentially happen after the draft where they don't have that 21st pick to offer up. But Steven Adams had a bit of a down year in 2018, 2019 with the Thunder. He wasn't his same consistent self. 13.9 points per game, 9.5 rebounds, but he's kind of a liability on the defensive end. I, I watched a lot of Thunder basketball, and he did not look the same. But if Boston wants him, I could definitely see him ending up as a Boston Celtics next season if the trade price is right. Still younger than everyone thinks. He's right. only 25 right now. We'll turn 26 later in July. Right. But what could a possible deal look like here, knowing there is the monetary issues involved? I did everything I could to figure out <laughs> something that makes sense for these two teams to get a deal done. This is the only thing I could figure out. Al Horford is not going back to Boston. I mean, that's almost a done deal. He gone. And OKC likes Al Horford. They tried to bring him in a, a couple of years ago. Billy Donovan's a Florida guy. Al Horford, Florida guy, obviously. You do a sign-in trade, you make the money work, you get Horford in, in Oklahoma City. It's kind of your stretch big, something Steven Adams couldn't do. And you send Steven Adams to Boston, and they get a young center to keep building alongside Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I think it makes a lot of sense if, if the Thunder are willing to pay the price of matching that money. All right, so here's what a potential lineup for OKC could look like. You like Horford there on the offensive end. Does the defensive end give you any concern? It doesn't bother me because you have an elite wing defender, uh, assuming he comes back healthy in Andre Roberson. Paul George is a great two-way player, a uh, defensive player of the year candidate. Jeremy Grant is a springy kind of rim protector guy. I am not worried about a defensive fit with Horford at all. You take the offense in this And scenario. you've got totally not a bust New Orleans to help you out at center Exactly, as well. exactly. And <laughs> not to mention... Adams, I just said this, was a liability last year on defense. He was not the same defensive presence in the paint that he usually was. And Horford's not a bad defender by any means. Boston, well, you get something back for exactly. Al Horford, who you could end up losing for nothing at all. That provides a nice piece at center where, frankly, unless you are fully bought into Robert Williams, eh, maybe you don't have a lot of, of options there. Yeah, I mean, I like the youth here. I think this makes, sense, makes a lot of sense for both teams. It gives Boston some reassurance when Horford leaves, assuming he does. And, and you still got guys like Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, Gordon Hayward, if he can get back to his normal self. I mean, that's still a potential playoff team in the Eastern Conference. All right, folks, where will Steven Adams play next season? Let us know in the comments section. Jimmy, my prediction is the Thunder will keep him and they'll trade someone like Schroeder Sh instead. I agree. I, I think he ends up at Oklahoma City Thunder. I don't think he's going to get equal value on the trade market. All right, folks, let us know what you guys think in the comments section.